This is Paul Jenkins, and you're listening to the Reluctant Leader Podcast. Now, I believe two things are true. One, everyone leads someone. And two, no one really feels qualified to lead anyone. So maybe you feel overlooked, unqualified, invisible. But the good news is, in the Bible and in life, the most qualified aren't always the most obvious. Man, I am so excited about this very first episode of the Reluctant Leader podcast. Um, again, thanks for being a part of this. And and as always, man, like it, share it, um, rate us, man, help us get the word out. Um, this has been something I've wanted to do for a while and just never really felt like it was time. And in the last couple of weeks, just since that God said it was time to start sharing with you some of my story. And I think what you'll find is some of the story that's common to a lot of really great leaders. We tend to think of leadership as something that only the super charismatic people can do and the people that have all the confidence in the world. And sometimes when we really take a peek behind the scenes and see what's going on in the hearts and minds of leaders that we really love and respect, We might be surprised to find that they were just as reluctant to step into those positions as we might feel about stepping into our positions of leadership. And I want you to know, I believe without a doubt that everyone leads someone, but almost no one feels qualified to lead anyone. So I think all of us tend to struggle with this reluctance to step in. And quite honestly, I'm a little nervous of people that aren't reluctant to step in and lead because leadership brings with it such a responsibility to the people that are following. And it it just carries such weight and such responsibility. The Bible even speaks in James 3, 1, that those who teach um, are going to be judged more strictly. Like that alone should cause us to feel a little bit of reluctance to lead. So for this first episode, I just want to share with you Um, A story in the Old Testament that I really relate to, I I read about Moses and I see the call of God on his life. And while I relate to Moses, I don't want you to think that he's the only example of a reluctant leader. And we'll get into some of these stories as we get through this first season and in seasons in the future. I think we'll interview leaders who will bring out certain characteristics of certain leaders that we see in the Bible and even in history and we'll find that a lot of them were reluctant. I think of um, Saul in the Bible. Now, I'm a pastor, so a lot of my references are going to be from the Bible. But King Saul was anointed king, and they couldn't find him because he was hiding in the baggage. Listen, baggage in our own lives, it'll make us reluctant to lead. Um, David was anointed king, and they couldn't even find him because even his own father didn't count him worthy enough to bring him out with his other brothers and and to be examined by the prophet. So here's an example of one of the greatest kings in the history of God's people, and he was overlooked and forgotten. Um, Peter was a little bit reluctant to lead. Paul, he was much more ambitious about following Jesus than he was about leading people. As a matter of fact, one of his most famous statements was, follow me as I follow Christ. It wasn't like, hey, look at me, how great I am. Come, lead, come let me lead you. It was, hey, I'm, I'm trying to follow Jesus. And as I follow Jesus, you're welcome to follow me. I think throughout scripture, we can find examples like that. Even Joshua, who was Moses's protege, he had to be told by God on a number of occasions to be strong and courageous he was reluctant to lead God's people into the promised land. And so it, I see this um, this come to a head really with Moses. We, we find in Exodus chapter 3 where God has appeared to him in a, in a burning bush, a bush that was on fire, but it wasn't consumed. The Bible says that Moses had turned aside to see what was going on. I think that's important that he had given his attention to something that was unusual. And so I think a lot of us in our calls to leadership, there were moments in our lives when God, 
He used something to get our attention. And as we give our attention to it, we hear the call of God. And when Moses was called by God, he was called by God to do something that was greater than he was. And and man, can you relate to that? I can. A lot of times we're reluctant to lead because what we're actually called to do, we just feel like we're drowning. We feel like we're going to, which it's over our heads. Like, um, it's like we're, we're pretending that we're good enough. And we think that if everybody knew who we really were, no one would have ever asked us to do this. And that's what Moses says to God. Here's, here's what I want you to remember from this first episode. Anytime that we're called to do something great. I think we can learn from the two questions that Moses asked God when he was called. And in the first question he asked him was, am I enough? Isn't isn't that, isn't that how we all feel in Exodus chapter three, verse 11, right after he was told by God that he was being sent to the Pharaoh to release God's people. This is what he said. Moses said to God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh? and bring the Israelites out of Egypt. Basically, what he's saying is, am I even enough? God, are you sure you have the right person? Have you ever said that to God? Have you ever said that to a boss who was wanting to promote you to a position, and you were like, "Um, are you talking to me? Moses knew who he was. In fact, if you read his past story in the Bible, what we find out is that he knew the answer to who am I? The answer was he was a murderer. He was a runner. He was a hider and, and he was a stutterer. He wasn't even really good at speaking. And so he's like, God, are, are, I know me. I don't think I'm enough. Right. And so it, when we're faced with a task, faced with something that God's asked us to do, whether it's to lead a, a church or to lead an organization, or to lead a classroom. Maybe it's just to lead our children, right? Maybe it's just to lead yourself. Sometimes it's easy to ask ourselves, like, am I even enough? Paul says in the New Testament, he says, hey, am I even adequate for the task, right? And so what he finds is, of course I'm adequate, not because I'm all that, but because God makes me adequate. He said our adequacy comes from Christ. Here's the second question that he asked, not just am I enough, but he asked, do I have enough? Exodus chapter four, Moses says, what if they don't believe me or listen to me and say the Lord did not appear to you? Now that's an interesting question. What if I go tell them what you told me to tell them and they don't believe me? What he's basically saying is, God, what if I don't have enough? What if I don't carry enough authority? What if I don't carry enough power? What if I don't carry enough charisma? What if I don't carry enough conviction? And listen, unless you're blessed with this amazing personality, and when you walk in the room, everybody listens to you and every head turns to you, unless you're born with that, you can relate to this question from Moses. I know I can. I was on a a conference call, and we were talking about um, struggles that I had early in my church planting days, the church that I planted and pastor now, we, we planted it 11, almost 11 years ago. And, and immediately I knew that this question from Moses, this is what I struggled with. And maybe it's what you struggle with as well. Do I have enough? Do I carry enough? I, I watch other people get up on a platform and, and literally command the attention of other people. I see like these extrovert type one, type AAA people like just get up and they just, it just comes so easily to them. And when they speak, everybody listens. And I don't often feel that that's me. I feel like I'm a little reluctant to get up on the platform because I'm not sure that I'm going to say it the right way. Or maybe there's a lot of other people that could lead better than I'm able to lead. And yet What I'm really saying to God is, I know you're calling me and I know that you're telling me to go, but are are you sure that I have what it takes? And what I love about God's answer is God didn't ask him about all the things that he didn't have. God's question to Moses was very simple. He simply said, what is that in your hand? Can I just pause and ask you that question? Can we just take a minute and and just take from the story of Moses and just bring it into real life? What is in your hand? 
What, what do you have? There's something you have that caused God to, to, to call you into this season, right? He sees something that he can use in your current situation. He's not asking you to win the lottery so that he can use all of your resources then. He sees something in what you possess now that he can use. I think sometimes our reluctance comes from focusing on all of the things that we don't have. When God wants us to focus on what we do have and then take what we have and put it in his hands. See, leading people is bigger than all of us. And until we give God what we have, we'll never feel like we have enough. So give him what you have, and he will make it more than enough. As a matter of fact, when when Moses took, he said he had a staff, and that was what he used as a shepherd. When he gave that to God, God transformed it from a staff of Moses into a rod of God. He transformed it from something that Moses used to take care of a few sheep to something that he was able to use to lead a nation. All because Moses said, this is what I have. I think about a a little boy that had some fish and some bread and the grown-up disciples were freaking out about how to feed a multitude of people. They knew that they didn't have enough, right? They were having a Moses moment and they were like, um, God, you're Jesus, you're telling us to feed them. Do you know us? Are are we are we enough? And do we even have enough? And they weren't even asking if they had enough. They were like telling Jesus, we don't have enough. And and Jesus just simply said, just like his father did in Exodus, he said, What do you have? And they had some fish and they had some bread. And Jesus took what they had and he gave it to them and through them, he fed tens of thousands of people and had so much bread left over that there was a basket full for each of the disciples to take home. A basket full of broken pieces. I believe it was a a reminder from Jesus to his disciples that when you give me what you have, even if you don't think it's enough, I'm going to give it back to you, and it's going to be more than enough for the task, and there's going to be some left over for you, because God is even, he's even watching over the leftovers. And I love that about our Father, right? And so, hey, whatever you're called to do, whatever task is in front of you, if it's something big, or if it's something that you might think is small, whatever it is, I guarantee you, if it's something God called you to do, you're going to have these questions that Moses had. Am I enough? I want to remind you that your adequacy, your enoughness comes from God through Jesus Christ. And then you're going to ask, do I carry enough? Do I have enough? And whatever you have, if you'll place it in the hands of of the one who's calling you, it will be more than enough. Listen, thanks for tuning into this very first episode of the Reluctant Leader Podcast. I can't wait to bring you interviews in the future um, of leaders that I have grown to love and respect. Um, I know that God gave me a very specific task. He said, build a platform so that you can put other people on it. And so I'm building this podcast as a platform to be able to interview leaders who have experienced seasons of being reluctant and yet are allowing God to use them anyway. I believe that you'll be encouraged in the interviews. I can't wait to experience this first season with you. As always, go find us wherever you listen to podcasts, rate us, review us, share these episodes with people that come to your mind as you're listening to them, people that will be encouraged with the truths that we share here. And I can't wait to continue this conversation with you when the next episode drops. You've been listening to the Reluctant Leader Podcast. Thanks so much for being a part of this conversation. You can follow us at the ReluctantLeaderPodcast.com or wherever you download your podcast. Be sure that you subscribe and like us and leave us a rating and a comment. 
We'd love to hear from you and hear what God's showing you. And remember this, no matter how reluctant you feel, keep saying yes, and he'll do the rest.